Hello guys, welcome back to Reality of Music. In this video tutorial is another section of Rudiments of Music. I believe you enjoyed the first video, that's Rudiments of Music 1. Um, this video tutorial is about um, another lessons, or another lesson on Rudiments of Music. So we are going to look at time signature. Um, we are going to look at time signatures. Um, simple and compound time signatures, the skill, semitones and tones, skill degree names, um, key signature, let me say key signatures, and then some musical terms and then meaning. So starting with the uh, time signatures. So as you can see on the screen, time signature consists of two figures, one placed above the other at the beginning of a piece of music to signify time. The top figure shows the number of beats in each measure or bar, whilst the bottom figure shows the kind of beat. So uh, this simply means uh, you have two figures that's uh, in mathematics they will say numerator and denominator. So the top one shows the number of beats in every bar and then the one below or the denominator shows the kind of beat meaning that the top figure is going to show the number of beats that's the kind of beat in every bar meaning the numerator is going to show the number of denominators in every measure or bar so looking at this the relative values of the beat so um, Semibrief is a whole note, so we represent semibrief with one, that's a whole note. And minimum is a half note, it's actually one over two, so we can't just bring the one, so we leave with the two. Crochet is a quarter beat, so quarter, one over four, so we just bring the four there. And then quiver is eight. If it happens, or we happen to have semiquivers, it will be 16 note. Um, Demi semiquivers will be 32nd. Hemi Demi semiquivers will be 64. So um, the semibrief is a whole note, minimum is a half note, crochet is a quarter note, and then quiver is an eighth note. Meaning that you can have something like 2 1, meaning that you need to get two semibrief or two semibriefs in every bar. When you have 2 2, means you have to get two minims in every bar. When it's 2-4, it means you have to get two crochet beats in every bar. When it's 2-8, it means you have to get two quivers in every bar. That's a simple explanation. Now we have a summary of some simple time signatures as you can see there. They are basically divisible by two. So with the simple time signatures, we have in those three table there. A three table there I think it's four rather right but simply put a three table that's uh, we have the duple time triple time and then quadruple time so under the uh, duple time we have two four and then four four means quarter notes or it represents the quarter notes that means we need to get two quarter notes in every bar that's um, a quarter note, one beat or count. And then under the triple time, we have three, four, meaning that we need to get three crochet beats in every bar. With the quadruple time, we need to get four crochets in every bar. So assuming, I'm gonna play the keyboard to just make a pause. So assuming we have two, four, and then we are to give a pause of two, four. That will be one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So when we have three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. When we have four, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that is that under the quarter notes. Now moving to the half note. 
Uh, we have two two, meaning that we need to get two minims in every bar. We have three two, means we have to get three minims in every bar. We have four two, means we have to get four minims in every bar. That is that for half note. And then when we get to the eighth note, and then we have two eight, means we have to get two quavers in every bar. When it's three eight, we need to get three quavers in every bar. When it's four eight, we need to get four quavers in every bar. But let's look at this thing. You can have the situation whereby a music will be in two four, but in a certain bar or in a certain measure, you have a straight minimum there. Minimum is already two beats, so that whole system or that whole measure is completed with um, that's the two four rhythm. And then when you begin to have about um, four quavers under two four, quaver is a half beat. So four quavers will give you two beats because two quavers will give you one beat and then another quaver will give you another one beat. So add up or when you sum up, it will give you two crochet beats in every bar. The same implies to three, four, when you have, you can have um, six quavers giving you three quavers in advance. That's um, when you divide one crochet it will give you two quavers so three crochets can also be equivalent to six quavers which will be under three four and then that will be correct you can also have a dotted minimum a dotted minimum which will also give you three beats under three four you can also get under four four you can also get a straight semi brief which is already a four beat you can also get two minims that also give you four beats. You can also get two crotches and then four quivers, which also can give you four beats. Irrespective of the note you use, you still need to get four crotchet beats in the in every bar. And then the same in plus to two, 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 eight, three, eight, four, eight. When you make the mathematics of them, you get everything incorrect the correct proportion. So going to the compound time signatures, you can also see the table there, um, duple time, triple time, and then quadruple time. So under du uh, duple time, you have six, eight, which normally represents with uh, dotted crotchets. And then two dotted crotchets, let me put it that way. A dotted crotchet is also relative, uh, also close to, or when we divide them, we can get three quivers. So summing them up will give you a daughter crochet. So two of them, two daughter crochets, will give you six eighth or six quivers. So normally you see six eight be in this form, daughter crochets, two daughter crochets, or you can have the traditional six eight, which means that you get a straight six quivers over there. And then with a nine eight, three daughter crotchets so three daughter crotchets meaning that you need to get nine so one daughter crotchet will give you three so dividing the other two you get nine so two of them will give you six plus another daughter crotchet which will give you nine and then the two of eight when you divide them you also get two of eight we have under the uh, we have six four, that means you need to get two minims, two dotted minims, yeah, in every bar. Nine four, you need to get three dotted minims. Twelve four, you need to get four. You need to get twelve dotted minims in every bar. With the six sixteen, very funny. So six sixteen means you need to get two dotted quivers in every bar, 9-16, that same thing, and then 12-16. So that's a real complex um, rhythm there. So from time signatures, you move to scale. To scale. So you will say a scale from a Latin word, scala, scala lada. It's a graduated series of musical notes, ascending or descending in order of pitch according to specified interval scheme. So that means we need to start from a certain point and get to another point. 
So that is it, a specified interval scheme. So inter an interval is a difference between difference, difference in pitch between notes. So music depends on the succession of pitches and certain measurable patterns of intervals used with regularity. These patterns may be extracted from the musical examples, arranging order, and expressing scales. So basically, we, music is based on scales. The music is based on scale when it comes to the melodic nines and the harmonic nines. They are based on the scale. So the basic intervals used for scale analysis are the half steps and then the whole step. Another adjacent keys on the keyboard sounds a half step. The interval of two steps sounds whole. A whole into bracket is two half steps according to occurs between C and D, D and E, F and G, G and A, and A and B. Observing that there are no keys between E and F, B and C, the intervals are half steps or semitones. So briefly, we can see the summary of semitones and whole tones. So you see on top from C to the black key, that's the S meaning semitone. So from C to D, is the whole tone that's they have a black key in between them. So the red ones you see are the semitones, and then the uh, violet or mauve ones you see are the whole tones. Okay, now to the scale degrees. Traditionally, traditional names are used for the identification when the reference is made to specific scale degrees. The tonic is the first degree. The pitch of fifth above the tonic is the dominant. And then the fifth below the tonic is called the subdominant. And then the fourth scale degree. And is the fourth scale degree. Let me put it that way. The pitch midway between tonic and the dominant is called median. And then and is the third scale degree. The pitch midway between the tonic and the subdominant is called submedian, and is the sixth degree scale. The pitch immediately above the tonic is supertonic, and it is the second scale degree. The seventh scale degree is a leading note or subtonic, depending on whether it is one half step or two half steps. So the summary of it is that with a C major scale. Classical degree on the bass staff. So you see the first note on C is the tonic, D is the supertonic, E is the median, F is the submedian, uh, sorry, subdominant, G is the dominant, A is the submedian, B is the leading note, C is the tonic, D is the supertonic, E is the submedian. F is the subdominant, G is the dominant, A is the submedian, and then B is the leading note. So these are the basic scale degree names for major scales. Now to the key signature. They are parties of sharps and flats at the beginning of the staff to show the tonal center of every music. So. When you want to know the key, you can just um, look at the beginning of every stuff. You see a formation of either sharp or flat signs there that will help you know the uh, skill you're working with or the key. So you can see a summary of its sharp and flat key signatures. So the one with no stuff. Oh, sorry, no sharp or flat is the key of C. The one with one sharp that's on the F is G. Two sharps, F and C. So F sharp, C sharp will give you D major. F sharp, C sharp, G sharp will give you A major. F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp will give you E major. F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp. Then A sharp will give you B major. 
F sharp, C sharp, J sharp, T sharp, A sharp, E sharp will give you F sharp major. And then we have F sharp, C sharp, J sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp, and B sharp will give you C sharp major. So um, let's look at the flat keys now. With the one flat on B flat, that's the third line on the treble staff, and then the second line of the bass staff is F. So two flats, that's B flat and E flat, will give you B flat major. B flat, E flat, e, A flat, will give you E flat major. B flat, A flat, sorry, B flat, E flat, A flat, and then D flat will give you A flat major. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat will give you D flat major. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat will give you G flat major. And then B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat, F flat will give you C flat major. So let me do a very quick one here. When it comes to when it comes to enharmonic notes, you can see um, enharmonic notes are uh, notes with two different names but the same sound. So with the keys you saw there, C flat is the same as C flat is the same as B. D flat is the same as C sharp. E flat is the same as D sharp. F sharp is the same as G flat. G sharp is the same as A flat. And then B flat is the same as A sharp. So bear in mind, bear in mind when someone asks you to play me C sharp, it means you are also playing D flat. When you are told to play D sharp, it means you are also playing a F, E flat. When you are told to play G flat, it means you are also playing F sharp. When you are told to play J sharp, it also means, or it also means you are playing A flat. When you are told to play B flat, it's also um, A sharp. That is that when it comes to key signatures. Now, onto the musical terms of meaning, we have the P, which stands for piano, meaning soft. Meaning soft. So you can have something like um, then pianissimo that's very soft so Then we have MP, mezzo piano, that's moderately soft. So something like this. That's moderately soft. F means 40. Oh, and then the meaning is loud, so so for Tissimo, that's very loud. Moderately loud, so something like that, and then we have fini means end. We have 
the capo. The capo means repeat. That's after playing a particular system. So let's say you have the, the capo at bar four, meaning that when you uh, when you play from bar one or measure one to measure four, you have to repeat from measure one to measure four again. That's it for the couple. And then we have added you that slow. So something like this. Okay. So poco a poco means little by little or little by little. So something like this. Uh, um, Something like that, and then we have conspirator. So conspirator, we can have something like this. Normally, it's being expressed by the um, performer. So you just when you just go with him, you just feel how he plays. So something like this. Uh, So Adante means at a walking pace. So you can get something uh, like this. Mm, okay. Normally, it's expressed on the uh, bass lines, normally. So you can have um, bass, guitarist, or organist on their left side doing the, these kind of movements. And then presto. Presto means fast. So very fast. Uh, and then allegro and then lively so something like that So that was it for Allegro. We have Accelerando, meaning gradually getting faster. We have Retardando, gradually getting slower. We have Crescendo, 
gradually getting louder, the crescendo gradually getting softer, ostinato that's persistent, normally given to the bass lines. You can find them doing something like this. Uh, So the phrase has been always the phrase is being repeated. That is it for Ostinato legato is smooth, staccato is detached. That is it for the music items. I believe you enjoyed this um, lesson on the rudiments of music. That's the time signature, skills, key signatures, and then the musical times. Keep subscribing to Reaptor My Music. God bless you.